Hello and welcome to Period the Masterclass. I am Tanika. I am so excited for this masterclass today to educate you and to allow you to feel more embodied in your bleed time. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm a cyclical living and mindset mentor, intuitive healer and womb healer. So getting into this work has come alongside organically my own path and being so embodied in my own cyclical living that it is time to share this wisdom. It is time for every woman to feel connected to their womb and to their womb's wisdom. So before we get in completely, I just want you to make sure that you have a journal, a pen, maybe a warm tea or cacao and a cup of water with you just so that you can be really present in this space together. Um, You know, throughout this, I'm going to be giving you journaling prompts and then you can pause it so that you can take your time to journal on them and then replay, um, click play again once you're ready. So having a journal and pen is a really crucial part to getting the most out of this masterclass. Once you have got yourself organized and you're comfy and you're ready, we can jump straight into it. So before we get into all the information, let's just take a few rounds of breath. Let's get into our body, right? We're so busy all the time. We're always thinking about what's next to come. So let's just take a moment, placing one hand on your heart space and one hand on your womb, Closing down your eyes and just breathing, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth to just ground into your body and just visualizing that you're actually breathing in a beautiful white ball of light in through the heart space and out through the womb space, grounding you, connecting you to yourself, to your inner wisdom Allowing any noises that need to be made to come through, just being in that expression of letting go of everything that you're holding on to. And just beginning to scan your body, scanning your body. Recognizing if you're holding any tension in your eyebrows, your jaw, maybe your shoulders. Maybe you can just feel there's some stuck energy somewhere in your body. Just bringing in some light movement to allow that energy to shift so you can be a completely clear channel to receive all the wisdom that is here for you today. Taking in one more deep breath, letting it go with a sigh. And when you're ready, coming back to this space, coming back to this sacred space, the masterclass period, the masterclass, where you're going to be learning more about yourself beautiful. <clears throat> so this masterclass is for the women who are ready to learn about how their body works. It's for the women who is ready to create a deeper connection to her womb space and to understand her cyclical nature. This is for the woman who is wanting to best honor her cycle and learn rituals or little ways that you can tweak your already your life already to um, best honor yourself in your inner winter. Um, I'm going to be journaling you through, sorry, I'm going to be guiding you through some journaling practices. And at the end, we're going to be doing a little meditation to just really anchor in the new belief that we have around this phase of our cycle. So this is going to be a really empowering and educational space for you to learn more about yourself, which is perfect. This phase of our cycle is the one phase that every woman knows about yet most women are not educated on and we need to change that we need to be educated and liberated on who we are so this masterclass is going to change everything if you actually put in the 
I'm not going to say effort, but like, you know, sit with yourself in presence and actually pause it with the journal prompts and actually allow your womb's wisdom to come through. And I really invite you, you know, you can watch this more than once if you feel called to just get more codes that might come through for you. Um, This can be an activating conversation. This can be overwhelming, especially when, you know, we have not really been educated on our, sorry, on our cycle so much. It can be like a lot of information at once. So just knowing if that overwhelm comes up or any activation comes up within you, placing a hand on your heart and a hand on your womb and just taking a few rounds of that beautiful grounding breath. So I wanted to begin with the fun little fact that women on average have 450 periods in their lifetime, right? 450 periods. That also accumulates to about 10 years, 10 whole years, right? Of our life that we are bleeding, which mostly we are conditioned to believe it's a space. It's a time to reject ourselves, to be in secrecy. It's a time to be in, you know, feel shameful that we're bleeding, And that's why we need to shift this, because if we are wanting to live our dream life, there's no fucking way we're going to be able to do that if we are literally living in a shame pit for 10 years of our life. That is a really long time. So before we jump into the rest of it, let's set our intention. So I invite you to grab your journal, to grab your pen, and I just want you to write down what is your intention for today's journey? What is your intention? What are you wanting to learn Do you want to cultivate a deeper sense of awareness with your body? Do you want to learn how to honor your cycle at this phase? What is it that you are wanting to get out of this? Because intention is everything. Once we have our intention set, the universe hears our little words, our whispers, and it can actually gift us that. (laughs) So taking your time to do that, and I'm just going to jump into the next part of this masterclass. Please note that you can pause at any time you need to. Um, to make sure that you are getting the most of this. So I'm going to firstly begin with how this is in a season of winter. You may have seen with posts I've put up, or you may just know that we have four phases to our cycle. And obviously in this, we're just speaking about the first phase, which is menstruation, our period. But with the four phases is also four seasons that directly correlate with the, the cycle. So for our bleed time, it's our inner winter. This helped me so much on my path of understanding my my body and understanding how to honor myself. So the way I want to put it for you is in winter time, when the earth goes through her cycle and she's in winter and we are living through that, we are in a space, which right now for me, it's, it's winter. We're in a space of wanting to snuggle up in bed. We are wanting to keep warm. We want to eat soup, drink tea. You know, maybe have a cacao just to like really ground in to the energy. We just don't want to get out of bed. It's just a really inward time, right? You probably notice that you socialize less. You just want to be in your own energy. That is literally the exact same as our body's inner energy during menstruation. It is our inner winter because our body temperature is actually at its coldest, just like the winter time. Our hormones are at their lowest, so we don't have as much energy and we are just wanting to be in that rest and rejuvenation energy. And that is the best way to honor this phase. You can begin to think about some of the favorite things that you love to do in the winter time. I know for me, I love lying out in the winter sun and warming my skin. So, you know, you can implement these same sort of things with your bleed time. Um, Another way as well, you know, being the inner winter is like heat packs, right? Socks, all the things like that. It's just, that's how we are best going to honor. I'm going to give you more um, rituals alongside this, but you know, that is the best way to Also, like, remember in your mind, like, okay, what do I do in winter? That's what is best to do for my body at this phase. So eating the warmer foods as well, as I just mentioned, can be really powerful because that's actually what our body needs. Our body needs grounding meals during this time. Our body needs nutritious, nourishing meals during this time. Obviously, implementing like iron in whatever way you do. Of course, I'm not a nutritionist, but I'm just, you know, allowing you to understand that it's really important in this time, especially with where our hormones are and our bleed, of course, where when can drop in our iron levels. So implementing those into your meals. And yeah, so that's like all I'm really going to touch in on with the inner winter. I just have a journal prompt for you. 
so this one can be a little bit activating, but I just want you to really reflect on when you hear the word period or you think to when you're bleeding, what feelings come up in your body? So just remembering to come to that breath, taking a few rounds of breath, pausing this and taking your time to journal. What feelings come up for you? Maybe it's shame. Maybe it's like secrecy and just recognizing that. So just pausing it here and taking your time. Okay. Now that you have written down what comes up for you during your bleed time, I want you to just be in, just remember that's there. That's a story. It is a belief. It's not real. That is coming up for you. Of course, if you wrote connected, liberated, all these things, that is beautiful. You've worked through some things and you feel that way with your bleed time. So for me, I remember I would always, you know, I feel like every girl has this story, right? Of, you know, when you would have your period and you would go, you'd be in the school bathroom and you'd be trying really quietly to open your pad and then it would make a noise and you'd be like, oh my God, everyone knows I have my period. And it would just be the worst thing ever. And even as an adult, that can happen, of course, right? Um, having to hide that you're bleeding, like maybe you were shamed in your household of like, you know, maybe you grew up and you had brothers and your mum was like, don't let them see that. There can be so much that is attached to this word period. And it's usually negative because we're conditioned to believe it's a negative thing, even though, fuck, it's normal. <laughs> um, yeah, I just remember on my journey, you know, that secrecy was a really big thing. And the shame, the shame of, ew, like, ew, I'm bleeding and rejecting myself. And in those years, in those times when I was rejecting myself in that way, as I've spoken into, I have had a journey with contraception. So, you know, a lot of my life I was getting fake bleeds. I wasn't even like my body wasn't even working how it should have been, but I would skip my period. I know a lot of girls do that as well with the pill. And I would just be like, I don't fucking want it. And it's really funny because in those years where I was rejecting myself in that area of my life, I also didn't feel worthy in any area of my life. So just recognizing that what may have come through for you could be a block in your path to moving into your higher self, to moving into where you want to be in life. And our womb is full of wisdom. So we can shift past these stories. I am a direct example of that. Trust me, I literally cannot believe who I was just a few years ago. It blows my mind. I'm like, anyway, so yeah, just remembering that what you wrote down, you are not wrong. You are so it's okay. It's normalized, but we're going to shift past that so that the words that you're writing is connected and liberated and empowered and grounded and just all the things. So, um, I'm not sure if I said it, but I'm just going to repeat myself. If I have already said it, let me just change my screen. So this is a phase of intuition, restoration, release, healing, and surrender. Our body is craving to go inward and it is important that we honor that as much as we can. So of course, this can be hard to honor, especially if you're a mama, you're busy, you're working a few jobs, studying all the things. It can be, you know, it's not something that our society has structured for us to be able to just completely pause. The Native Americans, they used to go to a red tent when they were bleeding. That's a like a traditional thing that they would do. All the women would go to a red tent during their menstruation so they could be honored and be in inward and be in stillness. And honestly, if we can get our world back to that, I swear, like I'm here for it. <laughs> But, you know, it's in the history of woman, it is actually, it is a time of going inward. So even though it can be hard with working all the time, I want to give you some tools to be able to go inward as much as you can with your schedule, whether you've got a busy schedule or not. So obviously being like a mama, all the things, like I just said, it can be really hard to find this time to rest. And you might hear the word rest and go, huh, I'm not fucking resting. Like I can't, there's no way. One way that you could honor your, um, this, this time is by pre-planning and pre-creating your meals. So as I was just speaking into, it's really important to try and implement more nourishing, grounding meals and iron rich foods, right? Sometimes it can be really hard to like 
know like these things, right? To like have it all ready. So if you are in a different phase of your cycle, I would say your inner summer is the best phase because your hormones are at their peak and you've got more energy. Then taking your time to plan out and actually to have a day of cooking out foods that you're going to eat in your inner winter. Of course, if you have a partner at home, that is ideal. So they can just cook that week if they don't already, um, if they're open to that, which I hope they are. But if not, pre-planning your meals, pre-cooking your meals, having them ready so that in your winter, you don't even have to think about it. You can actually take that time that you would usually be cooking your dinner for your family or yourself to actually just honor yourself in some sort of way. So it's sort of like time magic, like we're like creating a little bit more time in your rest period so that you can rest. Um, And it also allows you to know that you will be eating more in alignment with what your hormones are craving. So that's a really big one. And one that I would love for you to implement. Another way that you can best honor this phase if you are in a really busy schedule or even if you are just, you know, living your life and you've got the spare time to rest, taking a bath or if you don't have a bath and you only shower or all the things, how can you make this time more intentional? It could only be five minutes that you get to yourself, right? That you're in the shower or you've got the bathroom. How can you make this time more intentional to honor your body going through this sacred process? Maybe it is when you're putting on your skincare, you're doing it with more intention, you're doing it slowly and you're really feeling into the bumps on your on your face and you're just really feeling into your skin. Maybe it's coming back to that breath that we, we practice at the start, breathing in through the heart and out through the womb. Just when you're in the shower with the water trickling over your hair, just washing away the day. These are really just like powerful little ways that you can implement that little bit more stillness into your everyday life, but particularly during your bleed time. So let's get into, we've spoken about the inner winter and how our body directly mirrors the earth in that way, which is so fucking cool. (laughs) We've spoken about a couple of little ways that you can sort of honor that, this phase But I just want to share with you some ways that I, as a maiden, I don't have like lots going on. I've cultivated my life to, well, created my life to be able to live in alignment with my cycle and I run my business with my cycle. So it's a lot easier for me. I see that, but I just want to share what I do because you may have the time. So one thing that I do is I'm always sipping on this tea. I brought it with me. So I like remembered what what was in it and it's not even written on here. Oh my gosh, it's not even written on here. Good one, Tanika. Anyway, it's a woman kind um, tea. There it is. And it's actually like, this tea is fucking incredible. And I just find it really supports my body during this phase. So if you're wanting to look for some tea, raspberry leaf tea is really great. I honestly wish I could remember what's in this, but it's it really helps me. Um, as well as cacao, because our body is craving magnesium at this time as well. And cacao is so rich in so many different different nutrients and it's a really grounding beautiful way to also like break the curb in um that's not what it's called it's not break the curb but you know what I'm trying to say in like the chocolate cravings cacao can be really powerful for that another thing that I love to do is do womb massage so I have like this beautiful womb oil from a beautiful girl um I actually won it in a giveaway but it has magnesium chamomile lavender aloe vera and something else in it that I've rubbed the the name off but these like particular herbs and things are like really good for your womb so I'll just show you uh it's by moon rituals she's just on instagram like if you're interested in getting in getting that it or you could just use like any oil but connecting in with your womb on a physical level because physically you are shedding right you are shedding so much with your blood so connecting in with your womb and just allowing that beautiful safety to come through can really, really help. So now that I have spoken into a couple of these rituals that I love to do, sun bathing, womb massage, sipping tea and cacao intentionally coming back to my breath, I would like you to just really start to visualize. I'm just writing this in your journal or like writing this down. How can you set up a space just like the red tent, a space where you can best nourish yourself every single time that you bleed. As you would all know, the way that I view the womb space and the way that our body is presenting on a physical level is usually energetic. And I've seen this over and over in myself, in my clients, that a lot of the time when we have suppressed emotions, we have suppressed traumas in the womb space, 
it can present in certain ways to allow us to feel certain ways, right? So even though cramping and pain and like really heavy emotions is normalized, like I've said, it's not actually normal. Obviously feeling more emotional at this time is like something that a lot of women journey through and myself included. Um, but when you learn to best, when you learn to start honoring this phase, it actually will begin to shift the energy. When you are experiencing, and I know there's so many factors that can come into this, but I truly believe this to like the depths of my heart. When you are experiencing in your bleed time, cramping, pain, disease, right? So disease, disease. What are you not allowing yourself to release? Because this is a phase of release. Like our body is physically shedding. What is it that you're holding on to? Is it old identities? Is it people? Is it stories? Is it traumas? What is it that you are holding on to that you are not allowing yourself to release? And if you need to pause here and actually journal on that, I invite you to. Because when I realized this, I felt like I cracked the fucking code (laughs) to life. I was like, no wonder I was experiencing such shit bleed times. I wasn't letting myself release old cycles, old patterns, old people, all these things. And then once I actually started choosing me and honoring myself, it started to unravel and, and go away. So just noting that this is a time of release. It is a time of being inward and you are your most intuitive, like I have noted a few times throughout this call. So asking your womb on your bleed time, what is here to be released? And intuitively following the nudges that your womb gives you. Maybe for you, it is writing out a letter to someone who you're still feeling connected to and actually burning that letter. Maybe it's writing it and posting it to a fake address just to feel like that closure is there. Maybe you need to do a cord cutting ritual or maybe you need to do some inner child healing, you know, sitting with some photos of your inner child and just connecting back to her and saying sorry or whatever it is that she needs. These are all things that can like... Um, stack up to allow for dis-ease in our bleed time and I just really want you to understand like on an energetic level that we do we hold emotions within our body and we can let them go we don't need to hold on to them and sometimes it can feel scary to let them go and that's why um, we kind of our ego doesn't let us see that we are not letting things go so I just wanted to note that and now I'm just going to move into what a like healthy cycle will look like what a healthy cycle does look like and knowing that if you are presenting in any other ways, then, you know, of course, seek advice. If that's what you're seeking, you know, your body best. Um, but I just wanted to like speak into, so a healthy cycle can last for two to five, sorry, two to seven days. For, for me, I bleed for five days and that it's, it is really like normal for me. Um, period, your, the color of your blood, when it is red or a deep red, that is really healthy. That means the the bright red is like new blood. Whereas if you've got black or sludgy dark brown blood, that can indicate that it's like stagnant old blood. And I want to note here as well on an energetic level that when I have been doing a lot of ancestral healing on the cycle previously, sometimes my bleed is actually black because I've done so much ancestral release and I'm not going to get too deep into this, but we do hold up to seven generations energetically in our womb space from the women who came before us. So when you are doing work and you know that it's not your belief, it's not your story, it's not your whatever, and you're doing generational healing, sometimes our physical body can be shedding that older blood because it's old stagnant energy that you've had trapped in your womb space. So I just want to note that on an energetic level, but we we are hoping that our bleed is usually that bright red, that darker red consistency and then towards the end of your cycle you will notice that it can go a bit brown um, and that is a completely healthy cycle if you aren't bleeding or you are bleeding for longer periods than seven days I do invite you to just start looking at your environment start looking at what you are um, you know maybe the foods that you're eating what you're feeding into energetically so it could be are you always stressing out are you always on the go And not allowing your body to actually come back to a state of rest. And that can, obviously stress is a huge factor. We can actually lose our bleed time when we're not in alignment with our truth. So just starting to look at your environmental factors and noticing that maybe your bleed could be presenting in that way because you 
um, there's things going on that aren't in alignment with you. So if you do need support in that, of course, reaching out to me. It is your birthright to have a regular, easeful cycle. It is your birthright to have a regular and easeful cycle. Okay. Okay. So we've covered a couple of things now. We've covered the inner season of winter. We have covered some rituals and we've covered a couple of things just around ways to best honor and the history and all the things. So now that we have recognized the patterns, we've recognized the way that the word period even lands in our body. We've recognized things that we are wanting to let go of or things that we didn't even realize like that we're holding on to, to be released in our next cycle. We have spoken about ways to nourish yourself. We have done all of the things. We are now going to drop in with a meditation so that we can energetically cleanse the womb space and rewrite the story from your first bleed. Because the way that we were modeled, how our bleed time was from our mothers actually really impacts us to this day. And if your first bleed time, you were told that you need to hide it, it needs to be secret, it's shameful, don't talk about it, maybe you weren't even educated on it, maybe you had to on the sly Google it yourself or look it up in a book, right? We're going to rewrite that so that you feel safe in your womb, so that moving forward, you can release that story with your next bleed and you can begin to feel liberated. So I invite you to just come to a comfortable position, closing down your eyes and just connecting with your breath. And just allowing your breath to shift anything that has come up and you've been feeling into your cycle, your menstruation, any feelings or people that may have arisen. Just being calm, connecting with your womb. And just bringing the breath down, nice, big belly breaths, placing both hands on your womb space. I want you now to envision yourself back in your room, the room that you had when you became a woman, when you received your first bleed. Maybe you loved this bedroom, recognizing the feelings in your body, maybe it's safety, maybe there's a certain smell you remember your room would smell like, you can see the posters on the walls, the photos of your friends, your bed cover, just taking some time here to Connect back to your room, your bedroom that you had as a young girl. And if your bedroom as a young girl doesn't feel safe, taking yourself to a room that you desired to have as a young girl. Big, deep belly breaths, allowing the energy to shift. You are safe. You are held. Feeling your feet on the floor of this room, beginning to walk over and sit. Sitting on the edge of the bed. Still holding your womb, connecting in, you might begin to recognize from this space that the first ever bleed that you received is coming back to you the memory of how it happened, 
the fear, the pain, the upset. Just keeping with that breath as you sit on the edge of your childhood bed. Just witnessing the memories that's coming up. Recognizing now as you look across the room, you see yourself, this little girl, this little girl who had no idea what was going on. She recognizes you sitting in her room. And this is now your time to hold her, to give her a big cuddle, a big squeeze and tell her it's all going to be all right. Taking the time to educate her and what is to come and how liberating this bleed, this sacred bleed truly is. Spending your time with your inner child, your little girl, answering her questions, giving her all the love that she desires. modeling to her the strength and the empowerment and giving her a big cuddle, a big hug Telling her it's all going to be okay. She is so strong. There is nothing wrong with her. Reminding her you're always here. And reminding her with every bleed. You honour her. now your time to leave your childhood room or the space that you chose to go that felt safe to connect with your little girl you can see in her eyes she's so grateful that you were able to show her the way that you were able to take all the fear and allow her to feel so empowered for being a woman. And as you approach the door to leave, taking one final look back and seeing how happy she looks, that she was modelled, Self-love, acceptance. And coming back to your womb breath in this reality. Big, deep breaths in through the womb.
just allowing yourself to honour you now for going back and rewriting the story from your first bleed, for holding your inner child as she had no idea what was going on in her body, the fear, the judgement, and knowing you took all of that away. You allowed her to feel liberated and safe. (sighs) Feeling so much more connected to yourself in this moment. (sighs) Recognizing how much lighter your body feels. You've got the tools, you're so educated, you can be so embodied. You've changed the story that your unconscious mind believed all these years. And when you're ready, coming back to this space. Taking your time here, you can pause and just journaling on what came up for you. Maybe that was a really emotional experience for you. Or maybe it was a bit hard to connect. You can always come back and do this meditation again. Do it every few days until you see that little girl and you can change the story. And moving forward every bleed time, you can honour her. You can call in your inner child and release the pain, the fear that was instilled in you. Before we completely wrap up, I also just want to give you one little last nugget of wisdom. That grounding during your bleed time is really important. We are so connected to the spiritual realm at this time. So taking time on the earth is really, really important. I love to do this by sitting on the earth and bleeding on the earth, my blood, to honour myself, my womb, my lineage, and Mother Gaia, as we are literally one with her. So please incorporate that beautiful grounding ritual as well. It's really, really important to bring your body, your mind back down, to be present. I hope you feel like you've got the tools out of this that you were searching for. That it is okay for what comes up for you to come up, but now you've got the tools to hold yourself in that and actually allow the ease to come through. So journaling, connecting with your womb, keeping yourself all cozy. These are all really powerful ways. Rest, however that looks, just incorporating rest. and Penciling in some time just for you. <sighs> Thank you all for joining this free masterclass with me. As I mentioned... I am running a little giveaway. So the giveaway is going to be giving away two months of womb wisdom mentorship to a beautiful woman. And the way that you can enter this is by commenting below how this masterclass landed for you. And you can get a bonus entry by heading over to your Instagram and tagging me in your story and, you know, maybe just writing over there taking a photo of this and just saying your experience I would love to hear over there and sharing it so that other women can join and understand more about their cycle so I can create more impact and educate more women so that's a bonus entry if you post over on your Instagram story and yeah I would love to hear below how it landed so that you can be in the draw to win two months free mentorship with me where we dive into your cycle and how you can live best in alignment with your cycle with however your life is looking 
Um, we look at the symptoms your body is presenting you and um, deep dive into that so that we can shift past any dis-ease, shift past any thing that's coming up so that you can live in alignment with your truth and in harmony. So if you are wanting to learn more as well, I do offer a free 20 to 30 minute sacred cycle consultation where we can deep dive into your cycle and I can give you a couple of little tools um, custom to you. And from there, we can decide whether you should move forward into some mentorship or some healing with me or what could best support you. I really hope that this masterclass has helped you, that the meditation really did rewrite the story for you. I hope the journal prompts were helpful. I'll leave them in the show notes as well so that you can come back to them at any stage. And it's really nice um, each bleed to be in reflection in that way of, okay, what was coming up for me last month? What's coming up this month? So you can just sort of be like recognizing what's coming up for you. I love you so much. Thank you so much for joining. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. And I can't wait to hear how this masterclass landed. Bye.